When I came home, I took my cash, I'd sit there, count it, I'd take 10% of that cash, put it in an envelope. That's Monday. Tuesday, I come home, do the same thing, 10%, put it in an envelope. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, put it in an envelope. By the time church came around, I had this envelope with my with my tithe accounted for. Why are you telling me that story, Dave? Because I don't believe in tithing or I don't think it's that important. Cool. What happened was, along with my tithe, while I'm coming home and counting this money and putting my tenth in an envelope, I got another envelope. I got another envelope. And I will put the same amount of money that I'm tithing into this second envelope. And this second envelope be became the savings for my business. I said, I'm going to tithe 10%, give that to God, this other 10%, I'm giving this to my dream. The practice of the discipline created me to be a disciplined person. And I started understanding where all my money went to. When I started putting the 10% in this envelope and another 10% in this envelope, eventually I, came, I started giving another 10% to another envelope, living off the 70%, it didn't seem like I lost anything, believe it or not. You think, yo, I don't make enough money right now to be given any percentage away. Once I started putting this 10% in these three envelopes and I'm keeping the 70% for myself, it seemed like I didn't lose anything. In fact, it seemed like I started operating in abundance. It just seems like I had so much more after the discipline of separating this 30%. How is it that I'm living more abundantly off of 70% than I did 100%? Because there was a certain discipline that it took to start operating and finding out where my finances went. And once I understood that, oh my gosh, this was the secret. I found out that whatever I have, I will spend. Whatever I see in the account, that's what I'm going to spend. 7.45 a.m. Catch me on the morning meetup. Hosted by David Shane's. Most amazing community in the world, right? Right? For sure. Not, nothing better. No other community is better than this, right? Right? Y'all better start commenting in this thing. I, it's not a rhetoric. I want to know to, just to make sure it's the most amazing community in the world. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's jump into the conversation for today. Um, I am right now intermittent fasting. I've been doing it. Uh, I want to say it's been about a month, three, four weeks or so. It's been about a month. And uh, I'm really, really enjoying it because there are times where I want to eat before 12 and I want to eat after eight. But what I said was I would intermittent fast between 12 and eight until the podcast summit. That's what I told myself. I am really, really big on telling myself I'm going to do something and actually doing it. Otherwise, I'm a liar. Now, I'm not saying I get it right every time. It's not saying I'm the most disciplined person in the world. However, I do pride myself on the ability to uh, create these disciplinary actions for myself, these exercises and discipline. I believe uh, everybody, should exercise discipline at some point. I'm very, I'm very leery of people who say, yo, I want to be able to make all the money. Like I can't wait till I become a multimillionaire because then I can do whatever I want. Um, a person who has enough money to do whatever they want and does whatever they want whenever they want is a dangerous person. It's a dangerous person. It should not be the goal. The freedom to do whatever you want, to be able to make a decision and do it, um, is amazing. However, a person that just lets their flesh and their desires run wild, some people will call it um, ecstasy, not the drug. Y'all know what I'm saying? Like, this is an ideal life. Goodness gracious, wouldn't it be amazing to do whatever I want, whenever I want? And I'm telling you, it's not amazing. You start to lose control. Imagine losing control, 
where you can't control your desires. There are people that way. There are people that way where what they want, they go get it. And those could be called um, sexual crimes sometimes, right? Because I can't control my desire for what's in front of me. And my mind, my, my mind stops. And I'm all operating off of what I want right now. Landing you in jail for the rest of your life. Or um, the people who, like my man, M500, he, he talked about his weight loss journey. He said, yo, I was at a poor, I was at a, a, a depends on a person. Okay. Um, I just, I, I want you to experience it. He talked about his weight loss journey. He said, yo, I was just out of control eating steaks and, you know, eating out every night. Why? Because he had the money. But it almost killed him. Isn't that interesting? I'm telling you that right now, before you become super successful and before you make multi-millions and billions, I'm asking you to start practicing some sort of discipline. Just start acting, practicing some sort of discipline. I think it should be a regular part of our lives where we start denying ourselves stuff at some point. Got it? Now, I'm not saying that you, you need to go on a, a 40 day fast or you need to go on a cleanse every week. I'm, I'm not saying that, but we should practice discipline. A disciplinary practice, maybe um, not eating after a certain time or there are some people that practice um it was not like kids here and I don't I don't know the science but I thought it was cool somebody was talking about uh SEMEN retention in this case there's like children here y'all could y'all got to spell that fast retention you hold back it's a it's an act uh I I really really uh commend the um the Muslim faith, because they're real big on discipline, structure, order. You don't just do whatever you want. And again, I'm not. I'm not talking about just money, mortgage eliminator. I'm just saying that this needs to be a. This needs to be a practice in your life. Because some of you need to break the addiction to your phone. And for a few hours, you need to put your phone down and realize that everything's okay. But because you don't go through this practice, you pick it up every time you think about it. You ever, like, nothing's happening, but you think about your phone, you pat your pockets, and now you're in a frenzy because you can't find your phone. And you pick up your phone just to check the text and no one texts you. And check your Instagram and nobody sent you a message or check your emails and there's nothing important in there. And you almost lose your mind because we are so attached to this thing. For me, I told y'all this a while ago, sometimes I'll leave my phone upstairs and they come downstairs. These are my small practices and discipline to show at least myself that I'm not, I'm not addicted to that thing. So um, in business, we have to practice discipline. What I like to do, let me look at the, let me show y'all the uh, the definition of discipline. It's the practice of training people to obey rules or a code of behavior using punishment to correct disobedience. So this is when you are disciplining something or you're disciplining somebody. The practice of training people to obey. So I have to discipline my children because I have to practice them to obey certain rules or a code of behavior. And it's it often result, not often, but discipline is often going to result in uh, some sort of punishment to correct disobedience. Because the only way you correct disobedience is, especially in a child, there has to be some sort of punishment. I'm not saying beat your kids, but there has to be, okay, you did this wrong, here's the consequence. So it was yesterday, my wife, uh, my, ba my baby wants to ride. She wants to watch Baby Shark in the car. And she's like, Baby Shark? And I'm like, okay, hold on. Let me find my other phone to give it to you. And she said, I want Baby Shark now. Don't ask me where she got all the words from. She said it just like that. I want Baby Shark now. 
And my wife was like, what? Now you're not going to watch it. That's the punishment to correct the disobedience. Because you don't know. You don't, you don't know. You don't talk to your parents like that. She's a child. I don't hit her. But oh, no. And I had to look. We have to look at her. Listen, you will not watch Baby Shark right now until you apologize. Apologize to your mother. And she said, sorry. And we, we, had to, we had to correct it and say, okay, may I watch Baby Shark, please? And she said, may I watch Baby Shark, please? Okay, great. Here's the phone. Watch your Baby Shark, baby. To your heart's content, okay? But there has to be some sort of punishment and correction, meaning you need to train you to obey your own rules or code of behavior. Does this make sense? There are certain rules that you need to follow that are self-inflicted, meaning you want to work on a project and not get up from the desk until it's finished. So you have to train yourself to not get distracted and to stop coming up with a reason to stop working. Stop coming up with valid reasons to stop your, stop your grind. I told myself the other day, I actually made a video, I told myself the other day that I would shoot some content. But then last minute, not even but then, as if it's it's not related at this point, but I'm getting dressed and my baby's up and I'm like, all right, you know, I'm gonna take Sarai with me to work today. I wasn't thinking, I wasn't thinking the relationship between taking Sarai to work and actually working, creating content. So by the time I got there, I'm playing with her, I'm talking to Reese, we having conversations and all that kind of stuff. And I realized that she's not going to let me create any content. So I'm like, okay, baby, you got to be quiet. She doesn't have that ability right now for a period of time. So what I did was I sat down there, I put her on my lap, set up the mic, and we created content. It didn't have anything to do with anything. It's not like Reese would look at me and say, hey, you know you're going against what you said you're going to do, right? Or some, or some of y'all be like, hey, you said you want to deliver some content, and you didn't. Nobody said it but myself. And this was me practicing. Okay, there's a distraction, but I still have to get it done. So I have to train myself sometimes to obey my own rules. But because some of you don't have any rules that you live by, and you don't believe in discipline, and that's cool. That's your own belief. There are a lot of people that do not believe in denial of anything. I had a client that, um, this was when I was coaching entrepreneurship. And she said, uh, I don't believe in self deprivation. Is that the word? Self deprivation, right? Depriving yourself of something. She said, I don't believe in it. And I said, I can't help you. If you don't believe in depriving yourself of something that you want, in uh, in the pursuit of having greater, you'll always lack something because it takes discipline. It takes different. It takes like, okay, I'm going to put this off right now to get what I want out of life. And because some of us never practice it, it's hard to just start automatically applying it to business. So I set up one of the one of the things that really really helped me. And you guys will see that I do it today. I set up a call. It was a. Uh, it was the the meeting. It was the. It was called uh, the meeting of the minds or midnight meeting of the minds, something like that. Where there's a call that I did at midnight every Monday meeting of the mind, Monday midnight meeting of mind, something like that. Autumn M's. I said I was going to do a call at midnight on Monday, and it became a thing every Monday. And we did it every Monday for two whole years. We had hundreds and hundreds of people on the call. This is kind of like building the foundation for the morning meetup. But for two years, 104 calls in the evening. Now, how many times do you think I wanted to let everybody know we're not meeting tonight? Think about this. For two years, how many times? And I'm... I'm hosting the call every day. This is this isn't even when I I was even thinking. Oh, maybe I should get somebody else to host the call. I said 104. Natasha, give me my give me my two. 
104, 52 weeks, times two, 104. Don't shortchange me. No, I'm serious when I start talking like this. So how many times did you think, I, how many times do you think I didn't want to do it? Do you think I want to do it every day, every Monday? You mean to tell me you don't think that I had some stuff going on Monday? Every Monday is Memorial Day. You don't think I was at a cookout? You know what I mean? And want to like say, okay, guys, hey, you get some time off. Memorial Day. I know you guys with your family hanging out. Y'all at cookouts. You don't have to come this Monday. But I, I remember one time I was not feeling well. I was really out of it, man. And um, I wanted to cancel the call. This is one of the realizations I had for myself. I said, I'm going to do this because I said I'm going to do it. And I'm not going to let this circumstance take me off my square. Now, I'm not saying that you guys have to operate in this, but I'm saying these are some of the moments in my life where I had to deny, okay, this is how I feel, but I'm going to make this thing happen. I'm going to make this thing happen. You know what's cool? Um, that practice and process has rolled over to the morning meetup. Since 2017, okay, since 2017, so 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, or I think it was, no, 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 no. Morning started 2017, 18, so 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. In five years, in five years, can y'all ever remember a time that we canceled one of these calls Monday through Friday? There wasn't always a couple hundred people on the call. Can anyone remember a time? Okay. Sometime, I mean, especially in the very beginning, it was all me. I'm on every single day. And now I'm on every day too, but it's just, it's just like if I'm traveling or something like that and I'm, I physically can't get on the call, then I'm not on. And I and before we had Bryn, I hosted every day. If you had a guess, I host. Well, okay, so it's Bryn, before Bryn was shouts out to Lashana, and we kind of kind of went back and forth, whatever. And but she hosted a lot of the time. And before that, I hosted every single call. Do you think there was a time that I didn't want to do it though? Of course. Of course, but I take great pride in the fact that I do things that I don't always want to do. And that is going to be a really, really big challenge for a lot of you because your desires take over your future. Your desires today are killing your future because you don't want to not go. You understand? There are some people that you are dealing with and dating right now to this day and you know it's not going to help your future, but in the moment, in the moment, it feels great to be around this person. I ain't got nothing else to do. I'm lonely. I like being around this person, but, but the person continues to hurt you. But for some reason, you can't deny your feeling, your flesh, and giving into it. it. Hurts, man. Discipline hurts, but, but I want to bring some attention to it so we know this is going to be a focus for us for this year. With discipline opens the door for consistency. So look at this, the controlled behavior resulting from discipline. The result, the controlled behavior, meaning we need, we, there, there needs to be some sort of controlled behavior. So what I want you to do right now is I want you to take just a moment. I would like for you to create some sort of small discipline that you want to set up for yourself. It doesn't have to be anything big. It doesn't have to be grinding all night long. It doesn't have to be going on a 21-day fast or a cleanse or whatever, but it needs to be something. I hate, 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 hate everything about cleanses. I despise them, okay, with my whole heart. 
I hate them with my whole heart. Because the cleanse, so I can, I can do this. This intermittent fasting, I can do this. No problem. I eat between 12 and 8. And actually, it's actually getting easier and easier. It's all good. Sometimes, mo most of the time, I don't eat till 2 o'clock. I'm supposed to eat at 12, but I don't eat till 2 o'clock. When I first started, it's like I'm looking at the clock, 11.58, 11 11.59, 12. I got the sandwich ready. 12 o'clock. It's going to hit now. Ah, mm. Yes. I'm in here. I did what I said I was going to do. But oftentimes, I don't eat till 2, 3. I'm finding myself not eating till 4 o'clock because I'm in, the, I'm in the mode of grinding and working. And again, I can't eat till 8. So literally, 70% of the time, I'm eating one time a day. And it feels so amazing. I'm low-key getting addicted to it. Now, this I can do. It's not easy. It's not easy, but it's enough for me to stretch and be disciplined. I go on a cleanse maybe once every two years because I loathe it. Because it's like all, all like raw foods and stuff. You know what I mean? It's just, I, it, it, it pains me, okay? I, I, can, I can deny myself eating in a window, but if I can eat all day, but it has to be certain things, oh my gosh. But I make it a point to go through this process at least once every, once a year or once every two years, I go through this process. Why? Because I hate it so much. Why would I do something that I hate that much? Because it develops something inside of you. I continually want to practice my discipline. Continually. So you need to find something that we're going to be disciplined in, at least for this week, maybe. It's a, Monday's always a good a day to start something. So for this week, let's be disciplined in something. Let's pick something that you are going to do. And I promise you, if you create some sort of disciplinary action where you can be consistent in it, it starts to roll over, not affecting the thing that you're being disciplined at, but it affects the person that's practicing discipline. Every so often, and I, I, I think it was really cool that God set it up this way. Um, in the Bible, you got seven feasts and three times. So three times a year, we have seven feasts, right? Right now, we're in the prayer week of the Pentecost. And it is 10 days of 5 a.m., Worship and 8 p.m. every day for 10 days. Every day for 10 days. It's so cool that it's set up that way, and we got to do it every single year. And there's another one where it's seven days and another one for 10 days. It's so cool that it's set up that way because as I'm going into it, I'm like, ah, oh, man, 5 a.m. Hey, listen, and if y'all got two children, small children, and you live 30 minutes away from the church, you got to get them prepared. You got to wake up at 3.45 to get ready to be there at 5. And then my daughter and my son be wilding. <laughs> Do you know how many times I want to just, I, I want to sleep? So it shouts out to my man. I'm not going to say his name, but he missed the day. He missed one of the mornings. He's like, yo, I just, I woke up and I sat back down and I just missed the whole thing, right? Me hearing that said to my, and what's crazy is it rang in my head this morning. And I was like, yo, I am sleepy. My boy missed it. Ah, maybe I could miss one. Maybe I could miss one. That's crazy. Like, me watching someone miss it, miss the 5 a.m., almost made me feel like I had a pass to miss it and everything was going to be okay. It's not like if I miss it, I don't, you know what I mean? Like, I can't go to hell. I can't go to heaven anymore. You know what I mean? It's, it's, not, it's not that. But the discipline of it, I love the fact that I have that particular discipline baked into my faith. Does it make sense? Does it make sense? I, listen, every Tuesday night and all day Saturday, this discipline is baked into my faith. 
But what's cool is the more you do it, the easier it gets. The more you do it, the easier it gets. And it's not as like a like it's not as much of a pulling teeth to be disciplined. These are the, these are the things in my life that um, that are wrapped into me becoming somewhat of a disciplined person in certain areas. I'm not disciplined in all areas, but this this is a part of my life. Some of us, your particular faith may say you got to pray a certain time, a uh, certain amount of times a day. And some of you may look at it as optional. Your faith baked in a certain discipline. But because you can't keep it or you feel like you don't need to, you don't. And this has nothing to do with the religion or the faith. It has everything to do with you. Does it make sense? If uh, if y'all understand what I'm saying, I think every every faith, every every like religious belief has some sort of discipline baked in. Let's say tithing again. Whatever y'all believe in, y'all believe in. I'm just I'm sharing my thoughts. Tithing was a discipline for me, and I'm so glad I I I I started this process because I get. Uh, to church, this is especially when I was working at uh, working at the Cheesecake Factory. I have tips. I get to church and I give what I had in my pocket or what I thought I should give at the moment. Right? And guess what? Nobody said anything to me. Nobody was like, yo, Dave, technically that ain't a tithe. Tithe means tenth. It's supposed to be a tenth. Let me see your finances. Let me see what you made at work this week. Nobody said that to me. But I said, I wonder, that situation in my life exposed something greater because I didn't know where my money was. All of it. I come off of work and then we go to the bar, we go out to eat. I have money. I just put it in the account and I just start putting it in the account. And I started getting a little more serious in my faith. And I said, you know what? I want to give a true tithe, a tenth. So the discipline, I, I realize about myself, I can't wake up the I can't wake up the day I go to church and say, okay, let me figure this out. What I had to do was when I came home, I took my cash, I'd sit there, count it, I'd take 10% of that cash, put it in an envelope. That's Monday. Tuesday, I come home, do the same thing, 10%, put it in an envelope. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, put it in an envelope. By the time church came around, I had this envelope with my with my tithe accounted for. Why are you telling me that story, Dave? Because I don't believe in tithing or I don't think it's that important. Cool. What happened was, along with my tithe, while I'm coming home and counting this money and putting my tenth in an envelope, I got another envelope. I got another envelope. And I will put the same amount of money that I'm tithing into this second envelope. And this second envelope be became the savings for my business. I said, I'm gonna tithe 10%, give that to God, this other 10%, I'm giving this to my dream. The practice of the discipline created me to be a disciplined person. And I started understanding where all my money went to. Guess what, guess what, guess what? When I started putting the 10% in this envelope and another 10% in this envelope, eventually I, came, I started giving another 10% to another envelope. Living off the 70%, it didn't seem like I lost anything, believe it or not. It wasn't like you think, yo, I don't make enough money right now to be given any percentage away. But what was crazy, once I started putting this 10% in these three envelopes and I'm keeping the 70% for myself, it seemed like I it, it seemed like I didn't lose anything. In fact, in fact, it seemed like I started operating in abundance. It just seems like I had so much more after the discipline of separating this 30%. How is it that I'm living more abundantly off of 70% than I did 100%? Because there was a certain discipline that it took to start operating and finding out where my finances went. And once I understood that, oh my gosh, this was the secret. 
I found out that whatever I have, I will spend. Whatever I have, I will spend. Whatever I see in the account, that's what I'm going to spend. And maybe if I like analyze the whole situation with this 70%, because I didn't see a bunch in there, I don't go out as much. You know what I mean? I, I have this money in the account. At the time I'm single, go on a little date. I got the bread. But if I don't have the bread, I'm not hitting nobody to go on no date. So maybe that's where the balance was. But the discipline was, I, I, what I found out about myself is whatever I have, I will spend. And if I don't have it in my account or at my, at my hand's reach, I won't spend it which allowed this, this second envelope. Now, this first envelope, it, it, got, it got emptied every single week because I'm taking the envelope to my church, put it in the basket, no problem. But these other two envelopes just kept growing. And I would take the money from the envelope for my business and I'd invest it and I'd, I, 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 would, I would pay myself back, but also another percentage. So this money kept growing. Why? Because I practiced the discipline of tithing. I believe this is where um, the abundance or the financial literacy or my understanding of finances came from. I don't believe it had anything to do with, um, I, I didn't use tithing as an income strategy that some pastors will preach. If you tithe, God going to give you double. I, it's not like I'm putting money in the market. <laughs> it was, it, it may, hey, listen, if that's, so, and I don't know if we got pastor, if that's what you preach, I'm not coming at you. It was just funny. It was just funny, okay? And I thought it was funny, so I said it, okay? Don't, don't be offended. But I wasn't using it as, a, uh, as an investment strategy. If I give this to God, God will bless me with more. I was giving because I truly wanted to help my church at the time. That church I went to, I just wanted to, wanted to help. But the benefit came with me understanding how money works. Got it? So we need to create some sort of disciplinary action, okay? Especially when it comes to finances. We need to create some discipline. So me and my wife, we're going through this exercise now because um, we were looking at the credit cards and don't tell her, and she's on my lives, so I hope she's not on my lives. Hey, if you're on here, okay, this is just an example, okay? I'm not outing you. Well, we looked at like one of the credit cards and that joint was like $7,000 for the month. And I'm like, what's... <sighs> What's happening here? And we found out that, you know, it was literally DoorDash like twice a day. And that's cool. I, I listen, more power to you. She got my children. You know what I mean? And Amazon, every, every time I come home, there's a package. Amazon is saying himself, okay? Because it's so easy. And they got free delivery and all that kind of stuff, and it gets to you the next day. But DoorDash is mad convenient. Oh my gosh. I felt like, and I'm not home. I'm not home. So she's at the crib feeding the kids. Don't always want to cook. Cool. I ain't mad at it. But they may, I, I felt like, like you were trying to get some sort of like gold star membership or something like that at DoorDash. She was going crazy. But the cool thing is, she started looking at it and said, wow, I didn't know. Because it's just an easy thing. And guess what? It's not about the money. It's not, it's not like, oh, honey, we're going broke. because you're And all 7,000 wasn't DoorDash. It was a mix, though, of DoorDash. <laughs> DoorDash, Amazon, and just random stuff, right? So the, 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 the cool thing is when we sat down and talked about it, she's like, oh, I didn't even know. And now this is an exercise. And I, I explained to her, I was like, yo, it's cool. If you don't feel like cooking it, like it is what it is. I'm not telling you, but let's just bring it to your attention so that we can start exer exercising discipline. 
And what's been happening is she's been cooking more on a regular basis. And actually this process is more efficient because it's not like I got to run and try to call. And it's, it's, it's really, really dope. So the, the fact that we're exercising this together is absolutely amazing. So uh, I don't know what you are going to do, but I'm asking you to do something. Okay. Let me get to my, um, my, my points. Listen, did you know a, a disciple actually derives from discipline and a definition of a disciple um, a disciple has been shown to be someone who follows the teachings, life, and aim of another until a person becomes like a master. If you want to be a disciple of finances, you have to follow the teachings of somebody, follow the teachings of life, whatever your goal is, follow the teachings and start to master it. And I believe there are certain things that you can master if you just spend some time focusing on becoming a disciple of that. Got it? Undisciplined means uncontrolled and disorderly. Our life may seem out of control. Does any, anyone feel that now or have ever felt that? It's like your whole life is uncontrolled and disorderly and you really can't put your hands on like, like there's no structure. It's all over the place. We're so behind on our finances. I don't know where it all goes. And I, I'm, 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 reverting to the fact that I'm going to have to hit the lottery or there's going to have to be some sort of big windfall of money for anything to get better in my life. You understand? You're such a bad, your office is so all over the place. You're like, yo, I just got to throw everything away and start over. Do you know one of the reasons people move is not because they want a different, uh, they want to, uh, they want to live in a different place, or one of the main reasons people get a new car is not because anything's wrong with the old car, but the car is just in so much disorder, and people love a fresh new start. I just want to get into another car because I want that fresh new car. I want that car, new car smell. I want it to be clean, all orderly. And once things start getting too disorderly in your life, and you got this light on and this light on in your in in the little uh, what's it called the area that you see, like the little oil light and all that kind of stuff. Once some of that stuff starts happening and you get a scratch on your wheel and you got to get something else and something else. And it's like, oh, my gosh, this car is just out of control. And I just want to throw the whole thing away and get a new one. Dashboard. Yes, thank you. You guys are amazing. Same thing in business. Your business is so out of control and you don't know what to do, what the next step is or how it's going to grow. You pack it up. Throw it away. You start over where you can start fresh. Okay, this time I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it different. I'm going to set up systems and processes in this new business because it just gets so out of control. But that out of control or disorderly lifestyle is a derivative of being undisciplined. So hopefully. Someone take something for this. This is how we develop discipline, okay? One, you got to get disgusted, okay? And I'm going to uh, leave you all with this. One, you got to get disgusted. You got to be really, really uh, sick and tired of being sick and tired. You got to be through with this particular lifestyle of just everything being so disorderly and you want some sort of structure. You've got to get disgusted. You got to get really, really upset, passionate about wanting to change your life. If the fact that you make money but don't know where it all goes doesn't get you disgusted and you're not frustrated, it's going to be very, very difficult to change it. That's one. Number two, pick something easy to do and do it over a period of time without breaks. Quick commercial, uh, why I promote the Podcast Summit so much, podcastsummit.com. Make sure you get your tickets. Meet me in Miami for the Podcast Summit. I think it's really, really cool that uh, I've dedicated the rest of my Monday, but Mondays, the rest of the Mondays in my life to creating a podcast because it allows me to create something where I'm going to be able to share my message every single week. So are y'all coming to the Podcast Summit too? Are y'all coming? Just go to podcastsummit.com. Just get your tickets, man. Stop being so undisciplined, unruly. <laughs> Get your tickets. Okay. Um, so pick something easy to pick something easy to do that you can do over a period of time, whether it's making your bed, whether it's washing your car every single um, 
Friday, every single Tuesday. You make it a routine, just discipline. If you don't want to do it, it's fine. You got to fight against the not wanting to do it and you do it anyway. Just pick something that you can do and be disciplined at it. Maybe it's Friday nights, 7 p.m. You turn your phone off, put it somewhere and you live life for the next 10 hours without a phone. I don't know. Let's pick something that we can do that we can be disciplined at for a period of time, okay? For a period of time. That's important. A period of time. Number three, you got to get in some sort of accountability group. Got to be in some sort of accountability group. You need to be accountable. Otherwise, if you're the only person that knows that this is a discipline for you, you will soon give up. If you don't have that internal motivation, which most of us don't. So... We need to find a group of people that we can be accountable for. You know why I don't drink a gallon of water? Because I don't have a group. And it may seem like I drink a gallon every day, but I've had this for at least five days, okay? I've had the same one for at least least a week, okay? Uh, But I don't got no accountability. I got no... You know, let's do this together. Hey, you checking on me? I'm checking on you with the whole water thing. You know what I mean? At least a, at least a week. At least a week. Okay? But it's cool carrying it around. And uh, number four, you got to get excited about the work and not the reward. Be excited about the completion of it. Be excited about the completion of it every day. Okay? So um, do me a favor, Brent, for the next five minutes, if you can, if I, uh, I'm about to run. Um, let's get some people to commit to some disciplinary action, what we're going to do for next week, for next month, for the next year. Okay. I think that's going to be really, really important. And, um, we will check on it. We got an exciting week in the morning meetup this week. Okay. I love you all. Make sure y'all watch the podcast, uh, course in the morning meetup. It's going to be amazing. Uh, let's get it. Bryn, the floor is yours, sister. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. Hey, everyone. So uh, really quickly, I'm going to make the book club announcement. If you want to get your hand up. Just just watch this whole episode. If you like this episode, watch this one right here. Click right here. You're going to like this one if you like the one you just watched. Check it out.